Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 7 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from June 2013. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. A block B is placed on a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. A particle P of mass 0.6 kilograms is placed on the upper surface of B. The particle P is attached to one end of a light and extensible string which passes over a smooth pulley fixed to the top of the plane. A particle Q of mass 0.5 kilograms is attached to the other end of the string. The portion of the string attached to P is parallel to a line of greatest slope of the plane. The portion of the string attached to Q is vertical and the string is taut. The particles are released from rest and start to move with acceleration 1.4 meters per second squared. It is given that B is in equilibrium while P moves on its upper surface. In part one, we need to find the tension in the string while P and B are in contact. And in part two, we need to calculate the coefficient of friction between P and B. So for part one and two, there isn't really any information that's not given in the diagram over here. We've got particle Q moving down with acceleration 1.4 meters per second. And that means particle P is also going to move up the slope with an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. To start with, we're going to try and find the tension in the string. And we're going to do that by looking at the forces that are acting on particle Q. We have a weight pulling downwards of 0.5 G and a tension force pulling upwards. So we need to resolve forces in a vertical direction on particle Q. Taking down to be positive because that's the direction of acceleration, we get 0.5 G minus T equals mass times acceleration, so 0.5 times 1.4. If we add t to both sides and then subtract the 0.5 times 1.4, we get t equals 0.5g minus 0.7. Here I've just done half of 1.4. If we put that into our calculator, we get a tension of 4.2 newtons. For part two, we need to calculate the coefficient of friction between P and B, so we need to think about the forces that are acting on particle P. We have a weight force acting down of 0.6g, and that means that we've got a normal contact force coming out the surface, which we'll call R. We've got a tension in the string. Because we've got a smooth pulley, the tension in this side of the string is equal to the tension in this side of the string, so I can call them both T. As the direction of motion is up the slope, the frictional force will be in the opposite direction down the slope. I've called it F lim because it's limiting friction. In order to figure out the coefficient of friction, we need to know limiting friction and the normal contact force. So for particle P, we'll start by resolving in a direction perpendicular to the slope. We've got the normal contact force, which is entirely in that direction, so that's R. We've got a component of the weight going into the slope, and that's 0.6G cos 30 degrees. And that's going to equal zero because there's no acceleration into or out of the slope. Rearranging, we get R equals 0.6G cos 30. And that gives us R equals 5.09 and so on. As we're not asked to calculate R, we won't round that to three significant figures. We'll just store this value in our calculator for later use. Now with particle P, we're going to resolve parallel to the slope. We've got a tension force going up the slope, which will take us positive because that's the direction of acceleration. We've got limiting friction coming down the slope. And we've also got a component of the weight coming down the slope, which will be 0.6 G sine 30. That's going to equal mass times acceleration, 0.6 times 1.4. And we'll now rearrange to get F lim on its own. So adding F lim to both sides and subtracting through by 0.6 times 1.4, we'd get F lim equals T minus 0.6 G sine 30 minus 0.6 times 1.4. Using the fact that F lim equals mu R, we can rewrite F lim as mu multiplied by R, which is 5.09. We'll substitute in a value for t, which we found up here, that's 4.2, minus 0.6g sine 30. Well, sine 30 is just a half, so that becomes minus 0.3g, and 0.6 times 1.4 is 0.84. So we get mu equals 4.2 minus 0.3 minus 0.84, all divided by 5.09. Remember, we stored the value for r under letter a, so we can just put that in. And that gives us 0.0825 if we round to three significant figures. However, since I might need this value from you later in the question, I'm going to store that as B. In part three, we're told that given the weight of B is 7 newtons, calculate the set of possible values of the coefficient of friction between B and the plane. 
So we've got quite a bit of information from the first two parts of the question that we can use to answer this. And we're looking to find the coefficient of friction between the block and the slope. Just to introduce what notation I'm going to use throughout the question, mu1 is the coefficient of friction between p and b. And I'm going to call mu2 the coefficient of friction between the block and the slope. I'm also going to have two frictional forces. The one between p and b I'm going to call f1. And the one between b and the slope I'm going to call f2. So I'm going to start by thinking about the forces on particle P, which we've already got in the diagram up here, but I'm going to isolate them over here. I've got the weight force coming down, which means there's a normal contact force, which is at right angles to the slope. I've called that RP. We've got a tension force pulling P up the slope, and we've got limiting friction working down the slope, F1. Now, I've greyed out two of these forces and left two in red. The two I've left in red are called the contact forces between P and B. And these are the two forces that will have an effect on the block. So now I'm going to think about the forces on block B. In the question I'm told there's a 7 Newton weight force just from the block. That means the surface will produce a normal contact force on the block, which I'll call RB. And there will also be two forces from P acting on the block. By Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the block exerts a frictional force on the particle, trying to prevent it from moving up the slope. That means the particle will produce a frictional force on the block, preventing it moving in the opposite direction. So particle P is essentially trying to pull the block up the slope with a frictional force. As the block exerts a normal contact force out of the slope on particle P, there must be an equal and opposite force from particle P acting into the slope onto the block you might want to consider this as an extra bit of weight pushing down on the block, which means it's going to increase the friction. We've also got a frictional force F2 between the block and the surface, but in order to determine its direction, I need to do a couple of quick calculations. First of all, I'm going to calculate what F1 is. Well, F1 in this diagram is the same magnitude as F1 in this diagram, and to calculate this, I need to do mu multiplied by r, and I've got the values for mu and r up here. So to get F1, I need to do 0.0824 multiplied by 5.09. I've got those values stored in my calculator as A and B, so I can do A multiplied by B, and that gives me 0.42 newtons. The only other force acting parallel to the slope is this 7 newton force here, and that's going to be 7 sine 30. As that force is bigger than our force here, then for this block to be in equilibrium, the frictional force between the slope and the block has got to be up the slope. From here, I'm going to work in a direction perpendicular to the slope to find out a value for this RB up here. So coming out of the slope, I've got my normal contact force RB. Into the slope, I've got 7 cos 30. And then I've also got RP, which I've got up here is 5.09. And that's going to equal 0. So if I add both of these to the other side, then I can calculate my value for RB. And that gives me 11.1 and so on for the normal contact force. Next, I'm going to resolve parallel to the slope. And remember, the block is in a limiting equilibrium. So I get F1 plus F2. And then in the other direction, I've got 7 sine 30. Remember, there isn't a component of either of these normal contact forces down the slope. And that's going to equal 0. So if I want to isolate F2, I need to add 7 sine 30 to both sides. But I also need to subtract F1, which we calculated over here as 0.42. So I get 7 sine 30 minus 0.42. And that gives me 3.08. So the friction required between the slope and the block to keep it in limiting equilibrium is 3.08 newtons. So that means for the block to stay in limiting equilibrium, the limiting friction between the block and the slope must be greater than the friction required to keep it in equilibrium. On the left here, I've got my normal contact force multiplied by my coefficient of friction must be greater. All I need to do now is divide through by 11.1. Now, I actually forgot to store this value in my calculator earlier, so I need to go back and get that. It's just here. If I press equals again on that, and then I will store that as C, I can now use that in this calculation here. So I've got 3.08 divided by C. And that gives me 0.276 if I round to three significant figures.